there's been a new law passed for clean air. And it doesn't mean anything. It literally doesn't, unless there's someone prosecuting uh, an offender, uh, it doesn't mean anything. Well, it often doesn't. I mean, and so in, uh, air is a good example. So in, uh, when I was starting up in, in uh, the UK and uh, across the rest of the EU, uh, since no one had brought these kinds of cases, they were new uh, in Europe. And I had to find uh, an example uh, where I thought it was a really serious problem and where we had a good chance of winning because we had this tiny, tiny team. And if you don't win your first battle, you know, uh, you may not stay in the game. So, um, and every entrepreneur knows that, you know, and this was a very entrepreneurial situation. You know, I had to find something. I thought the problem was very genuine and we might win. So the problem is really genuine with clean air, you know, in Europe, uh, something like 400,000 people a year die early of air pollution. It's a very genuine problem. Uh, and so I brought a case in the UK um, and we wound up winning, but uh, it was exactly what you're saying, that the law wasn't being enforced anywhere in Europe. So uh, here you had the UK violating, but all the big cities across Europe were in this situation, uh, and a lot of small ones. Uh, nobody was paying much attention. Uh, the air was far, far dirtier. So the laws had been passed, the standards had been set, but no one was actually yeah. enforcing this stuff. Well, that's right. I think, you know, uh, someone described it uh, nicely by saying, you know, the, uh, uh, the politicians, uh, uh, all the countries went to Brussels, you know, including the UK. And um, uh, they all wrote a nice law. It's quite a nice law. Uh, and they all took credit for it, patted themselves on the back and citizens said, oh, great, you know, now there's a law. Uh, and everyone said, great, you know, and then nobody did anything about it. And th that happens a lot. Uh, but not when citizens can come into court and all the government in and say you're not complying. You've taken the government to court several times. Yeah, well, in the UK on air quality three times and beat them three times. They stood up actually. Uh, so uh, we, we I, I, when I came to the uh, EU- It's so I, cool, by the way. It's, it, <laughs> I, mean, I know for you, this is just your wheelhouse. You do this like day in, day out, but it's so cool to take the government to court and win three times. Well, that's right, you know, uh, it is. Well, and uh, it, it really is. And particularly when you win in the Supreme Court, you know, you, have, you take them to the Supreme Court uh, and you win. And it was the first environmental injunction ever from the UK Supreme Court. I can imagine uh, it's as thrilling as winning a sporting event or something like that. Like you, you must, you must be absolutely elated when that final result, because it can be three or four years. Hmm. Uh, it's like an Olympics, really. If you think about an Olympic athlete yep. who tra yep. trains for four years and then bang, you know, you get that result. Um, and it's, it, it must be just exhilarating when, when that happens. There's a lot of adrenaline that's for sure <laughs> it's pretty exhilarating <laughs> uh, but it was another case where here you had the government i mean we we're talking about mr luter but i the, the government wasn't a whole hell of a lot better so we're in court um you know and the government barrister stands up and says oh uh, but now it's 2015 we're in the supreme court of the uk and 2010 they had to comply with the law they didn't uh and they said to the supreme court um you know we have no intention of complying with this law uh, for another 10 or 15 years. Meanwhile, 40,000 people in the UK alone are dying early of air pollution every year, 40,000. That's wow. 10 or 15 years is a lot of extra citizens going down. Yeah. And anyway, uh, and they said, we have no intention of complying with the law for 10 or 15 years because it's not convenient. Uh, and uh, That was their case. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then here, and here comes their case. And the barrister wagged her finger at the Supreme Court and said, and you may not order us to comply to the Supreme Court. So uh, one of the judges on the Supreme Court, uh, who is a very smart judge uh, and really gets it, uh, said to us, well, you've heard what the government has to say. What do you expect us to do? We're only the Supreme Court. Uh, <laughs> wonderful question, right? So we could say, well, forget that it's environmental law. You know, it could be family law or military law or securities law, whatever. You know, if the government can come in and say to the Supreme Court, you can't order us to comply with the law, we're going to do it or not, uh, then it's no longer a government under the rule of law. You know, it's a uh, government by fiat and dicta. And that's kind of what we said to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court uh, said, well, now that you put it that way, <laughs> uh, and they gave us the injunction, you know, they, they, they ruled for us there. And, and the government slowly is compliant. And that's why we had to go back to court twice. So, you know? so do we, in, I live in London, do we yep. breathe cleaner air as a result of that case? Yes, to some degree, and you will throughout all of all of uh, the UK. So uh, it's taken some years, and they're going slowly, which is why we have had to go back to court. But the uh, but air throughout the UK will be much cleaner as a result, and through Europe, we've now had cases in 
I think it's 20 countries. And we, we win them all because uh, it's so clear.